Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to talk about one of the most powerful bombs ever created, the Amarcan GBU-57. This bomb has been featured in many movies such as Zero Dark Thirty and Lone Survivor. Today, I will show you real photos of this bomb, as well as a step-by-step -step process of how to make it. Since it is an American bomb, of course, it's top secret. However, I have managed to get my hands on some documents that will allow us to recreate this beast. The bomb's official name is the Massive Ordnance Air Blast, but it is more commonly referred to as the GBU-57 or the 30mm GBU. The bomb was developed by Boeing for use by the United States. Military made its first flight in 2003. It was designed to be used against high-value targets such as bunkers, caves, and other types of underground fortifications. The bomb is effective against targets because it uses a combination of a large amount of explosives and a special-shaped charged warhead to create a massive air blast. This air blast is what makes the bomb so effective against underground targets, as it is able to penetrate deep into the ground and destroy the target. GBU-57 is one of the most expensive bombs ever made at $13 million per unit. The bomb is also one of the largest ever made, weighing in at over 14,000 pounds. Because of its size and weight, the bomb can only be carried by a few aircraft, including the B-52 Strata Fortress and the B-2 Sp The bomb is not just dangerous for the people who are in the vicinity of the explosion, but also for the aircraft that are carrying it. That is why only specially trained pilots are allowed to fly these aircraft when they are carrying the bomb. Now let's move on to the actual making of the bomb. But before we do that, if you are enjoying this video, then please hit the like button. It really helps me out and I would appreciate it. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe. As I said, the GBU-57 is one of the most expensive bombs ever made. That is, because it is a very complex piece of technology. And it takes a lot of time and effort to manufacture. The bomb consists of a number of different parts, including the body, the wings, the fins, the warhead, and the detonator. All of these parts must be manufactured to very precise specifications in order for the bomb to work properly. The first step in making the GBU-57 is to manufacture the body of the bomb. The body is the main structure of the bomb, and it must be able to withstand the immense pressure that is created when the bomb explodes. To do this, the body is made out of a special alloy of metals that is both strong and lightweight. Once the body is manufactured, the wings and fins are attached to it. The wings and fins are what allows the bomb to be guided to its target. They are also what allows the bomb to be dropped from a plane without it spinning or tumbling. The next step is to attach the warhead to the body of the bomb. The warhead is what actually causes the damage when the bomb explodes. It is a hollow charge warhead that is filled with a mixture of explosives and fuel. When the bomb detonates, the explosives in the warhead cause the fuel to burn rapidly. This creates a massive amount of pressure that is released in all directions. The pressure is what causes the damage to the target. The final step in making the bomb is to attach the detonator. The detonator is what actually triggers the explosion. It is a small device that is located at the nose of the bomb. When the bomb is dropped from the aircraft, the detonator is activated. This sends a signal to the warhead which then explodes. Now that we know how the bomb is made, let's take a look at some of the real pictures of it. This is a picture of the GBU-57 bomb. You can see how large it is just from the size of the people standing next to it. This is a close-up of the warhead of the bomb. This is what actually causes the damage when the bomb explodes. This is a picture of the fins of the bomb. These fins help to steer the bomb towards its target. This is a picture of the wings of the bomb. 
These wings allow the bomb to be dropped from an aircraft without spinning or tumbling. I know that some of you may be wondering why the U.S. military needs such a powerful bomb. After all, there are not many targets that could possibly be defended by such a powerful weapon. Well, the GBU-57 bomb was actually designed to be used against targets in areas with heavy vegetation such as jungles. In these types of areas, traditional bombs would often fail to detonate or would detonate too close to the ground, causing them to be less effective. The GBU-57, however, is designed to penetrate the ground and detonate below the target, making it much more effective. Another reason for the development of this bomb was the need for a weapon that could be used against targets in underground fortifications. For example, during the war in Afghanistan, the U.S. military found itself needing a weapon that could be used against the Taliban fighters, who were using caves as their base of operations. The GBU-57 was eventually deployed in Afghanistan, and it proved to be very effective against the Taliban. Now let us take a look at some of the real-life footage of the GBU-57 bomb being dropped. This is footage of a GBU-57 bomb being dropped from a B-52. The bomb can be seen falling through the air before it detonates. This is footage of the GBU-57 bomb detonating over a target. The massive explosion can be seen and heard in this footage. The bomb is so powerful that it literally obliterates the target. I know that some of you may be concerned about the use of such a powerful weapon, but it's important to remember that it is only used as a last resort. The U.S. military has strict guidelines on when and where the bomb can be used. It is only used when there is a clear and present danger to life. And it is only used in areas where there is no civilian population. The GBU-57 is truly an amazing piece of engineering. It is one of the most powerful bombs ever made and it has been used effectively in combat. Whether you love it or hate it, the GBU-57 is here to stay. That's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.